Hello guys, in this video I'm going to speak about a very important or very, very, very interesting mechanism called the flow cytometer and fax. Uh, actually I did two videos so in this video I'm going to mention specifically flow cytometer and in the next video I'm going to mention the fax mechanism, fluorescence activated cell sorting. Uh, let's start speaking about flow cytometer. Uh, flow cytometer is a cell counting mechanism uh, so it's used to count the cells and to get, to analyze the phenotype and the health situation of the cell. Uh, how does it work in general first? In general, in flow cytometer, I have something called the flow cell. In the flow cell, we add our um, cell mixture. Uh, then I have the sheath fluids. The sheath fluids will apply something called the hydrodynamic focusing. The hydrodynamic focusing of the sheath fluids will send the cells one by one through the uh, flow cytometer tube. It's very important to, to pass the, cell one, the cells one by one through the, uh, through the tube because here I have something called the laser beam and this, the cells should pass through the laser, laser beam uh, one by one. This point where, when, uh, where the cells pass through the laser beam is called the interrogation point. Now when the cells pass through the laser beam, there are two events happening. First is the forward scattering, which is the light scattered in an acute angle uh, to the forward direction. And the side scattering, which is the light scattered in, um, in a in every other di direction, in side directions. These two events, or this uh, light scatter uh, scattering, is detected by specific detectors called the forward detector uh, and the side detectors. And these detectors are uh, connected to a PC or a data analysis uh, anal uh, analyzer, which is going to analyze the data uh, obtained from the uh, detectors. Now this is in general. Now I'm going to speak in more in details. Saying that this is the uh, flow, cytometer, flow cytometer tube and then the cells pass one by one through the laser beam. When the cell pass through the laser beam, the cells scatter the light in a forward direction which is in an, a, the light scattered in an acute angle. This forward scattered light is directly proportional to the size of the cell. Why? Because the cells scatter as like a particular amount of light in the forward direction, but when the cell is bigger, the cell the forward scattered light will be larger or like um yeah, more um, more scat more forward scattered light will be detected. And when the cell is smaller, the cell will scatter less light in the forward direction. So the forward scattered light is directly proportional to the size of the cell. Now the detector detects the pulse of photons, um, which are the light scattered, the forward scattered light is a pulse of photons, which are detected by the detector. And the detector then is, as I told you before, is uh, connected to a PC or a computer. The PC will convert the intensity of the light detected by the detector into voltage. And then I will get a specific amount of voltage for every cell passing through the laser beam. The PC will give me a data similar to this. So every time a cell passes through the laser beam, I will get a specific peak. Um, like high voltage peak for large cells and low voltage peaks for small cells. The data or the forward scattered light data at the end will be similar to this. Time versus voltage and then the peak will be uh, proportional to the size of the cell. This is forward scattered light. The second event happening in the flow cytometer is the side scattered light. So when a, when a cell path through the laser beam, the cell will scatter the light in side direction. And this side scattered light is directly proportional to the complexity and granular, granularity of the cell. Why? Because the uh, simple cells uh, scatter the light in the side direction 
Yes, but when we have granules inside the cell, so when the cell is complex from inside, these little granules will also scatter light in different directions. And in this case, I will get more side scattered light like this. So this is a complex cell from inside. It contains uh, small granules inside. And then these granules will also scatter the light in different directions. And in this case, I would get um, higher intensity of the side scattered light. Similarly to what we saw in forward scattered light, the, the detector are, detectors are um, uh, connected to the PC which is going to convert the intensity of the light into voltage and then uh, I'll get something similar to this so the side scattered light data will be similar to the forward scattered light data so for uh, the, the the complex cells will give me a high peak and the simple cells will give me a, a small peak now in order to analyze uh, the cells, what I have to do is that I have, I, I can do, I can combine both forward scattered light and side scattered light data together. In, in this case, I'll get something called the two-dimensional histogram. The two-dimensional histogram from its name, it's two-dimensional. So I have side scatter and forward scatter data all together. In this case, what I get is something similar to this. So I have here four quadrums. If the cell appear in the lower quadrants, it means that it has low signal on the size scatter detectors, which means that the cell is simple. If the cell appears in the upper uh, in the upper half, it means that it gives a uh, high signal on the side scatter detectors, so it means that the cell is complex. If the cell appear on the right half, it means that the cell give high signal on the forward scatter, which means that the cell is big. And if the cell appears here, it means that the cell is small. So if the cell appears, for example, in this quadrant, it means that the cell is small and it's simple. If the cell appears here, it means that the cell is small but it's complex. Here, it means that the cell is big and complex. And here, it means that the cell is big but simple. I will give you a very good example of this, um, which uh, I have a, 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 an example about um, the analysis of a sample of white blood cells. So what we see here is an analysis of what white blood cells. This is side scatter and this is forward scatter light. What we see here is uh, a group of cells which are complex, very comp complex cells because they give a uh, high signal on the side scatter detector and they are medium inside. They are not so big and they are not small, so th they are medium inside. Obviously these cells are granulocytes because granulocytes or like eosinophil, basophil, or neutrophils, they are medium in size, but they are very complex cells. <clears throat> Here we have bigger cells because they give almost like uh, they give uh, more or less high uh, signal on the forward scatter, but they give low signal on the side scatter. So they are big, but they are not complex. They are simple cells, and these are monocytes because monocytes are big cells, but they are not complex. Here we have very simple cells because they give very low uh, signal on the side scatter and they are like um, uh, smaller than monocytes and granulo, uh, granulocytes. So obvious, obviously these are lymphocytes because the lymphocytes are smaller in size and they are uh, simple cells. Of course, this is a very useful technique <clears throat> used to, uh, to count the cells uh, and to analyze the phenotype and the health situation of the cells. And what's very special about this technique is that we can analyze many thousands of particles and cells per second. Um, it's like, um, it's an easy technique. It's not um, very hard to, 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 to perform and it's precise. It's very used nowadays in, uh, in all the laboratories. 
Um, this is everything I wanted to, to tell you about um, flow cytometer, which is very important to know if you want to know more about fax mechanism. In the next video, I will speak about fa fax mechanism. So if you know you, you want to know more about fax mechanism, then you want to uh, you need to watch the next video. If you like this video, please don't, don't forget to like, share, uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I will answer you and see you in the next video. Bye.